Great. Welcome to the School of Finance and Management. Welcome to our webinar on the various postgraduate programs that we offer. Uh, I'm Dr. Richard Alexander. I'm the Learning and Teaching Coordinator of the School of Finance and Management. And I also personally oversee the postgraduate programs in particular. And even more specifically, I'm the program coordinator of the MSc Finance and Financial Law program. All three pathways which we'll get on to a little later on. So, so far, at a glance, uh, so we offer not just not just in the School of Finance and Management, across the whole of SOAS, we have over 100 graduate programs. Our library is one of the UK's national research libraries. There are only four of them, and these are specialist libraries for particular areas, and in the case of SOAS, we are the national research library for studies in African, Asian, and Middle Eastern studies. We offer um, I, it says on the slide unparalleled. It is an unparalleled range of non-European languages. We uh, we literally teach Yoruba to Korean and everything in between. And in total, co degree combinations that might be single honours, law. It might be degree combinations, uh, double honours. So it might be. So, uh, Arabic and history, more than 400 combinations of degrees are taught across SOAS. And we have one of the most diverse student bodies anywhere in the UK. 50% of our students are from outside the UK. And I can say within the School of Finance and Management, when you look at our postgraduate programs, any of our postgraduate programs, that number goes up to well over 50%. So we have uh, we have currently in one class we have students from Bulgaria, from Egypt, from Hong Kong, and in keeping with that we have the largest concentration of specialist staff of any university, not just in the UK but anywhere in the world. Now we were formerly known as DEFIMS, the Department of uh, Financial and Management Studies. We became the School of Finance and Management in 2016, uh, just after the 2016 Guardian League table came out, and we were ranked sixth in the United Kingdom and first in London for business and management. And yes, that means that for business and management, we were ranked above the LSE. We were back. We were ranked above Queen Mary's and other universities and colleges you may or may not have come across. In the latest National Student Satisfaction Survey, this is a survey of uh, final year undergraduates, 96% of final year undergraduates in the School of Finance and Management said satisfied with the overall quality of their course. That put us fourth out of the 116 business and management departments across the entire United Kingdom. And within the School of Finance and Management, we run a range of taught master's degrees, uh, most of them MSc, but in one case, an MRS, a master's of research, I'll come on to that. We teach MSc international programs with regional specialisms in China, Japan, and the Middle East and North Africa. We have an MSc finance program we have an MSc Finance and Financial Law uh, uh, program with three different pathways. We have an MSc Public Policy and Management and an MSc Public Financial Management. And finally, we have a Master's of Research in MRES in Finance and Management. Now, the MRES, as we'll see, focuses more on research skills. So let's look at the, the three regional international management programs. They, they focus on finance and its environment in China, Japan, and the Middle East and North Africa, respectively. And we, so we combine the core principles of international management, which would apply wherever you're managing a corporation, with specific regional modules training you how to manage an enterprise in China, Japan, the Middle East, uh, as the case may be, uh, as, 
and also incorporating a number of finance disciplines. So how does that work in practice? When we move to the next slide. Right, that we start off with two generic core modules, international management and research methods in management. We, uh, we, we teach you how are the key research methods that will feed in to your dissertation that you take at the end of the program, uh, which is a piece of extended research, and extended writing of 10,000 words. And to put that in context, the assignments that, uh, that you will write, one for each module, that's 2,500 words. So 10,000 words is an, is an extensive dissertation. The research methods in management module is designed to teach you the skills that you'll need to complete that. Then there are regional core modules, depending obviously on the region we're talking about. Management in China, uh, two of them, dom uh, dom the first looking at domestic perspectives, the second international perspectives, then uh, management in Japan one, management in Japan two. There, rather than ha taking two distinct perspectives, what we have is we have two regional core modules, the second building on the first, over two terms. And finally, for the Middle East and North Africa, again, two regional modules, economic, business, and institution environment of the Middle East and North Africa, and management perspectives and sector. And then we offer a range of optional modules. And we offer, we offer several of them. And in total, uh, in total, you will take four of these, making eight modules in total. All our, all our programs, all our sorry, all our MSc programs consist of eight modules, and the balance between core modules and optional modules, or electives, if you like, um, they vary slightly from program to program. So, as we see in the international management programs, there are four core modules, four optional modules, and you choose from this list. And you can see on the slide: banking, capital markets, uh, Chinese commercial law. Uh, corporate finance, corporate governance, cross-cultural management, uh, international business strategy, international resource management. Just, just to warn you, incidentally, before I uh, go on to the second part of the list, that we do, uh, we do not guarantee that in any particular year, all uh, every optional module on this list will, uh, will be running. It varies slightly from year to year, but this gives you an idea of the range of options we offer. Then international marketing, international securities regulation, Islamic banking and finance, risk management, and topics in the Chinese economy. We also offer a range of language optional modules. Now here, I, sh here I should be clear that the language modules are optional. So if you wish to take international, uh, the MSc International Management China, for example, and you don't want to take any language options, that is perfectly possible. We do not require you to learn Chinese in order to complete the program. However, several of, of our students do want to take this advantage. So <clears throat> those that already have a significant knowledge of Chinese would take advantage or could take advanced Chinese for business. We also offer a range of special courses in Chinese of various levels, going up from level one, basic, up to level four, quite advanced. And for Japan, again, we offer a range of Japanese language options, uh, starting with basic Japanese one, going right up to higher advanced Japanese. Moving on uh, to the MSc Finance Program. Now, if the object of the MSc International Management Programs is to, is to train you in the, in the particular skills that you will need to exercise a management function in business enterprise in either China or Japan or the Middle East and North Africa, or alternatively, play a management role in 
an inter in an enterprise or corporation headquartered in J China, Japan, Middle East, South Africa, uh, in, your, uh, in a different part of the world. The MSC finance program, as, as it says on the tin, focuses on the finance sector. And the object is that you will acquire the, the key analytical tools, either for career in finance or to go on to join one of my colleagues, undertake further research at PhD level and become a researcher in finance. And so we teach you the main issues and methods. They're not the same thing. So the issues, the theory, the methods, the practice in corporate finance, risk management, uh, banking, financial econometrics. The idea is that you apply these in a professional and so we start off with a uh, with a pre-session introductory module of mathematics and statistics for uh, for finance, and this is uh, this is a pre-sessional course. So you take that at the beginning over three weeks in September, before the the main part of the MSc gets going at the beginning of October. And again, as with all our MSc programs, you finish with a 10,000 word uh, dissertation. In between, you take four core modules, corporate finance, ec ec economic principles and data analysis, finance in the market, and risk management. And then, again, we offer a range of optional modules. Now, all the, we don't offer language options on the MSE finance program. What we do offer is all other non-language options on the, uh, that you could take on a management program. So all of those international marketing, uh, international securities regulation, topics in the Chinese economy, all of these are offered. Plus <clears throat> advanced quantitative research methods if you really want to get into quantitative finance. Uh, bank regulation and resolution of banking crisis. I mentioned already that we offer international securities regulation. We also complement that with a separate module on banking regulation and blockchain and distributed electronic ledgers. Moving on to my own program, the MSC Finance and Financial Law. Now, this was created excuse me, this, <clears throat> this was created very much as, you know, as a specialist program addressing a key gap, a key, uh, uh, a key lacuna in the financial sector. What we found was with a typical bank, you will have a group of people in the various departments of the bank who were experts in the finance and principles of finance, were experts in the financial products that they worked with, but had no significant knowledge of the law or regulation relating to their work. For that, they relied on the compliance department. But if you asked about that and they said, yes, the compliance department deals with that, just as you were leaving to talk to compliance, they would say, but the problem is that the people in compliance do not understand our business. They don't understand what finance is actually about. Then when you got to the compliance department, you would find that this was broadly speaking true, uh, that they were typically lawyers. They had a good law or regulatory background, not such a good knowledge of the principles of finance. But they would say, just as their finance, just as their colleagues in the other department said, <clears throat> if only the compliance officers had an understanding of our core business, the compliance department would say, if only my colleagues in the other departments had a reasonable understanding of the law and regulation, so that they don't have to come to us every five minutes. So the finance and financial law program was created to train a new breed of financial professional, somebody with an understanding of both sides. So we prepare students for employment in international banks and investment firms. A uh, number of graduates from the program have taken up positions in banks in London, in Hong Kong, in Singapore. 
legal practice, a number of a number of them have gone into law firms. Incidentally, uh, I mentioned in terms of the international banks and investment firms, you know, the big financial centres, London, Hong Kong, Singapore, but you know, also other um, other more regional centres such as Lagos and Nigeria. Others have uh, have taken up positions in regulatory institutions. Some, incidentally, have started in one, moved to another. I think of one uh, one former student who worked for Deutsche Bank for some years in Beijing, and then moved to the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission. And some have gone into academia. We tra we train you for all these potential different careers, and then you, uh, in terms of the specific modules and study path you take, you move into one or one of the others. And we look at both national and international finance. Some modules are more domestic in nature, others are more international. And we look at how financial and legal principles are applied in the context of actual case studies. So again, we start off with pre-session introductory modules, again, over three weeks in September, introduction to financial analysis, introduction to law and legal method, to teach you the key principles of law and finance that the other modules will build on. Then, as I mentioned, there are three pathways. There's what I call the generic pathway or the uh, MSc finance and financial law, which is pretty much evenly balanced between the, the finance side and the law side. You can alter that balance a bit through your choice of electives, but it's designed to be more or less evenly balanced. And MSc finance and financial law with a major on finance or MSc finance and financial law majoring on the law side. So for the generic program, if you like, uh, we start off with, we have five core modules. So you take three electives, core finance, finance in the global market, financial law, legal aspects of corporate finance, and legal aspects of international finance. All of these are core modules, compulsory modules. Then on the elect, uh, for the electives, again, all the non-language modules were offered as electives or off optional modules on the international management programs or offered as elective or optional modules on finance and financial law. In addition, uh, we offer bank regulation and resolution of banking crises. And there are some students that used to take both the international securities regulation module and the bank regulation module. And finally, again, uh, blockchain and distributed electronic ledgers. On the finance side, uh, you take four, mod uh, four core modules. Now, even where you major in finance or law, we feel it's important if you're going to graduate with a degree with, uh, with the title MSc Finance and Financial Law, you should have studied something of both sides. So you take as your core modules, corporate finance, financial law, risk management, and finance in the global market. So three finance modules, one, one law module. Then again, on the elective side, all the language management options, plus bank regulation and resolution of banking crises, blockchain and distributed electronic ledgers, and legal aspects of corporate finance. What's the legal, what are the legal issues involved in how corporations finance themselves? And on the law side, again, it's four core modules, but it's weighted more on the law side. <clears throat> Financial law, legal aspects of corporate finance, and legal aspects of international finance, plus one finance core module, corporate finance, and um, a similar list of elected modules. Moving on, MSC public policy and pu public policy and management, and uh, its sister course, if you like, uh, MSC public financial management. What these do is they offer 
both a technical education, but also critical and comparative material. But how is public policy developed and implemented? How is the public sector managed across the world in particular, in the MSC public financial management, how are public finances responsibly managed? So starting with public policy and management, there are four, uh, there are four core modules. Public policy and management, perspectives and issues, public policy and strategy, managing organizational change and research methods and management. Again, finishing up at the end with a 10,000 word dissertation. And a range of optional modules. And these modules are aimed more at the public policy side. So we don't simply say we offer all the non-language management electives as we do on the MSc Finance and on the MSc Finance and Financial Law. We focus more on uh, on management and policy. So we do offer blockchain and distributed electronic ledgers, cross-cultural management. What's involved in either managing an office, an enterprise, in this particular case, a public sector enterprise, in, uh, in a culture different to the one you grew up in? What is involved if perhaps you're working in an international organization with, uh, with people under you from a variety of different cultural backgrounds? International human resource management, similar issues, but more on the human resource side managerial accounting, macroeconomic policy and financial markets, and two public financial management modules, planning and performance and revenue. Meanwhile, the public financial management program, as we'd expect, focuses more on the public finance side. And there are, um, the, uh, there are four, uh, three core modules in public financial management, as you can see, financial reporting, planning, performance, revenue, again, to, uh, finishing in order to prepare you for the dissertation, research methods and management. And a range of optional modules, blockchain and distributed electronic ledgers, international securities regulation. Macro, uh, that's important because, a, uh, because government departments also also engage in securities trading and investments, macroeconomic policy and financial markets, managerial accounting, uh, uh, public, and then public financial management, audits and compliance. Now you might say, well, why is that an elective module? Because not everyone in gay, uh, training for public financial management will want to specialize to that degree in audit and compliance, but some will. And then public policy and management, perspectives and issues, public policy and strategy. And finally, the Masters in Research. Now, this is not an MSc. It is designed to train you in the skills that you're going to need to undertake extended and more in-depth research. Uh, and it's designed to do one of two things. Either, uh, either for those who know that they want to go on to do a PhD and understand that, that, that their bachelors did not provide them, did not prepare them with sufficient research skills, and furthermore, an MSc will get them partway there, but an MRS will give them greater preparation specifically in research skills. Or maybe it, you know, or maybe it's, it's for, for someone who says, I don't want to be an academic, but I do understand that in my future career, I will be in charge of a major research project, and I want to gain the skills that will equip me to do that. So we have four core modules, analyzing qualitative and quantitative data, theories in management and finance, research design and epistemology, and advanced quantitative research methods. 
So what if you like one theory module and the others are all about analyzing data research. The dissertation is not 10,000 words, it's 20,000 words. And there are a range of optional modules with a smaller range. Uh, uh, bank regulation and resolution of banking crises, corporate finance, corporate governance, international securities regulation, Islamic banking and finance, and risk management. And just to flag up, so far I've been talking about our on-campus programs, uh, <coughs> our, 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 our on-campus uh, on programs provided over one year full-time or two years or occasionally three years. Three years is right, it's normally two years part-time here at the SOAS campus in London, but we also run a number of distance learning or online programs. And we offer those at MSc level, uh, they, uh, they, can, they consist of eight modules, and we also offer postgraduate diploma six modules. Uh, unlike the on-campus programs where each module is 15 credits, uh, on our distance learning or online programs, these are 30 credit modules. So, so, ra uh, so rather more, rather more study. Uh, over the week, and indeed there are two assignments, as we'll see, rather than simply one. And you can take an MSc finance or, or postgraduate diploma with four different pathways. Those pathways are economic policy, banking, financial sector management, and quantitative finance. You can take a, uh, an MSc or postgraduate diploma in finance and financial law, in international business administration, public financial management, or public policy and management. And we offer postgraduate certificate programs. Uh, so, uh, so the, uh, these would be so, uh, these would be two module programs in banking, economic policy, financial law, specifically financial law, or rather finance and financial law, financial sector management, public policy, public management, and quantitative finance. And if you're particularly interested in our distance learning programs, details of those are set out on a separate website, which we created dedicated to our online learning programs. And the, the link is there on the screen, www.cefims.ac.uk. And um, also, I thought it would be useful uh, if any of you are already aware that you want to folk, you're interested in a specific program. I've put on this slide a list of all the program conveners. And, and yes, uh, I will be making these slides available uh, to my colleague who can, who can send them out to those who've registered for the webinar. So, yeah, uh, so in answer to Claudia's uh, question, yes, we can do that. These are the uh, slide gives you the email address of each of your complaint, uh, each of the conveners. And the, uh, very briefly, application process we ask for an equivalent, so, uh, a first degree, a bachelor's degree, with good grades in any subject. And what we mean by good grades is equivalent to a UK upper second class honours degree, or in the US system, a GPA of 3.3, more or less. Uh, in the Chinese system, we would look for an, uh, for an average, uh, average grade of 80, very slightly. Uh, if you if you come to us with a um, with a bachelor's degree from Stanford with a GPA of 3.1, that's not going to be a major problem. Similarly, if you come uh, if you come to us from Central University of Finance Economics from Fudan um, with um, or another pro um, or even any of the Project 211 universities with uh, with an average of 75, you'd be likely to be uh, be successful. 
We consider relevant professional qualifications and experience, but we don't require them. So if anyone's watching this webinar and thinks, I've just, I'm just coming to the end of my bachelor's degree, I don't have any professional experience yet, don't be put off. What, uh, what this is saying is if you have professional experience, we will take that into account, particularly if, and it happens, your first degree didn't go quite so well, a relevant professional qualification or work experience can compensate for that. But if you've come straight out of your bachelor's degree, please do apply to us. And our application system is online. We don't, um, some universities have a formal closing date. We don't, but we would encourage you to apply early, uh, particularly those of you who will be required student visa, the earlier you apply, the easier it is to get your feet to go through the visa process in good time in order to, to start the program in the, in the autumn. So finally, are there any questions? Over to you. Uh, a very interesting question just came in. Um, somebody who is uh, who's not uh, a speaker of Arabic and was asking about the Islamic finance, uh, the Islamic banking finance module, and would it be a problem is that would it be a problem taking that module if you don't have a knowledge of Arabic? No, not at all. The Islamic bank and finance module does not assume any prior knowledge of Arabic. It's true. Some uh, it's quite popular with students from the Middle East. Who, who may well have knowledge of Arabic, but all the necessary Arabic language terms are explained to you as concepts in the course of the module. So you know, if, you don't, if you don't speak, read, or write Arabic, don't be put off. Do if you're interested in role for that module. And you, uh, certainly uh, what, what I would say is, although some students from the Middle East, from a Muslim background, uh, take Islamic banking finance. Others don't with no with no Arabic at all, and they do very well in the module. So if, you, if you're interested in the concept, sign up for it. Uh, is there liter is there literature uh, that I could send out uh, to help help people to help potential students to start reading up? Um, certainly, when you enroll on a particular program, you will then be sent a reading list, uh, either by admissions or by the departmental student support officer, a reading list that is tailored to that particular module. Um, you, uh, all, all those who enroll will get one of those. Um, be difficult really because of the breadth of the range of the programs that I've gone through. It'd be difficult to come up with a list of literature relevant to all of them. But if you got in touch with me or with the convener of the particular program you're interested in, we could certainly send you a preliminary reading list, yes. Uh, uh, somebody asked, uh, oh, are my contact details, are the contact details, uh, are our email addresses also on the SOAS website? Yes, they are. If you go to the SOAS website and you'll see uh, departments, uh, you then click on finance and management, and then, uh, then you click on staff, and there you've got uh, our, various, our various contact details, or alternatively, from the School of Finance and Management website, a web page, if you like, or section of the website, you can click on the degree program you're interested in. Up will come the name and email address of the of that program. Okay, I think uh, that pretty much uh, brings us out of time. So I, I'd like to finish by thanking you very much for your attention. And I do hope to be seeing some, or hopefully even all of you, uh, here at SOAS in the autumn. So thank you very much.